What the? This thing's made out of a freaking paper plate. <laughs> Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Jimmy with One Road. Today, we're gonna to be installing these awesome Infinity Primus component speakers in my 1995 GMC Suburban. I've owned this truck for quite a while now, and one of the biggest downsides while driving is the factory stereo system. It is downright terrible. It's got a tape player in it, and the speakers are literally thinner than the paper plates in my kitchen. Well, today is gonna change that. I recently had to take the door panels off to fix the interior door handle, and I figured, man, since that door panel's off, why not swap out these speakers, and that's what we're gonna do today. Back in the day, I drove a 2003 Dodge Ram pickup truck with the upgraded Infinity speaker system in it, and I couldn't believe how good it sounded. So that's why I chose to go Infinity with these new speakers. I read lots of reviews saying that these things were awesome and that's why I chose this particular model. What's strange is this thing actually came with component speakers from the factory. It's got a separate woofer and a tweeter. I could have just went for an all-in-one speaker, but I decided to go with component just to try to get the best sound possible. All right, guys, well, here's the box. Let's open it up. Right away when we look at these speakers, you can just see how well built they are. Checking out the build quality on the back, you can see they are built really well. Here you can see the new tweeter that comes with the system. For comparison's sake, here is the original, and this thing has a gigantic magnet on the back, and uh, it's a lot bigger. Though when you look deep inside, you can see the actual tweeter part of it is pretty small. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that this thing is probably gonna be worlds better than the factory tweeter. And here is the included crossover. This thing is fairly small, so we should not have a problem installing it and placing it. And what's cool is within the box, we have lots of options for tweeter placement, different pieces and components that all work together so you can get the right fitment. Now you can see on this control panel where the tweeter was right here. If we look underneath, you can see the space that the original tweeter sat. We're going to install it in the exact same position. And I think that I've come up with a winning solution using the parts included in the box. However, the first thing we're gonna do is tackle this woofer. Interestingly, it's actually not screwed in. You can see there are provisions for screws, but for some reason they didn't do that. They have these little clips or guides here. Right up top here, you can see there's a little clip and all you're gonna do is grab a screwdriver, press it in, and pry it out. Just like that. Now this whole speaker is just gonna rotate out. Come on, baby. There we go. And here you can see the back of the original factory speaker on this 95 Suburban. Wow, this thing is garbage. Next thing we're gonna do is test fit this speaker and I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it very, very steadily, put it into position, and now looking inside the window track from the top, you can see the back of the magnet has plenty of room with the glass rolled all the way down. That is a good sign and another reason why I chose this system. You can see the speaker is going to fit great. For the last few minutes, I've been test fitting the woofer into this space. While it certainly will fit here with just screwing a couple of screws in, I'm actually going to secure it to this bracket. There was some extra ears on here that I had cut off, and now this bracket will fit right in the perfect location to be able to screw a couple of screws in, and then I can screw the speaker to this bracket. What that's gonna do is allow a centered position of the speaker. The other thing I've been doing is trying to test fit the tweeter. Now, if you take a look at this control panel, underneath this grill, you'll see the space for the tweeter. This is where the original tweeter was, and this is where I want the new tweeter to reside. Included in the box was the seat for the tweeter, and what I I've been doing, if you can tell, I've been trying to kind of route out the hole here and also cut some edges off of this so that it'll actually slide right down and fit in there just like that. The tweeter will actually sit right in there and be secure. And on the back side, I have this ring that I could simply screw on and secure the whole system together. With that taken care of, I can now reinstall everything just like it looked from the factory with the original grill and everything, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so I've now drilled out the holes for the screws. I'm gonna be using these self-tapping screws. And now when I fit this bracket, I should be able to just screw it right in and secure it.
And now with the three screws installed, this bracket is tight. We are making major headway here. One of the things about installing a component system is that you have to install a crossover, this little guy here. Now what you have to do is install your inputs here, straight from the stereo, and then your outputs here go to the speakers. You can see there's one marked TW for tweeter and one marked WF for woofer. With the factory speakers, you can see they had a clip here with a brown and a gray for the woofer. And here's the tweeter, which I temporarily hooked up, but you can see same thing, brown and gray. So I went ahead and cut back all of the electrical tape to find the junction. And this is what I found. This wire right here is the brown wire coming from the stereo. And you can see the junction here where this part of it goes to the tweeter and this part of it goes down to the woofer. So now what I'm gonna do is actually cut this wire here, the main wire, this is the main wire wire coming from the stereo for this driver side speaker, as well as this gray wire you see right here. Once I cut these two wires, I'll be able to hook these two to the input on the crossover. Then I'm going to disregard the factory wiring from there. I'm going to go ahead and use this new wiring to go from the crossover to the woofer and also the tweeter. Now this wire is not dedicated speaker wire, so this wire will just be temporary until I get a new head unit in this truck. Once I get that new head unit, I'll go ahead and rewire all the speakers with really nice speaker wire. But for now this should work. I've been making some good progress here, just test fitting everything and making sure that this is all going to work. You can see this crossover is going to be mounted right about here. There's a flat part in the metal here and it'd be the perfect position for this crossover. Not only that, you can see there is actually a hole from the old speaker where all of the speaker wire can now be run into. Once this is mounted, it'll look something like that and I've already test fit the door panel and everything is going to fit absolutely perfectly. All right, guys, well, we are making progress yet again. You can see I have the sub installed completely. This sucker is not going anywhere. I also have that crossover installed. And if you look down behind the woofer, you can see the two red wires. I marked one of them with black tape just so I know which one is negative and which one is positive. They are wire tied up and everything is good to go. The only thing left to do at this point is to figure out my connection for this tweeter, put the door panel back on, and set this control panel. Well, the door panel is now back on. Everything is hooked up and back together Oh, except for all of that. Well guys, I've only done the driver's side so far. So for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave my dash and stereo loosely put so that when I take off that passenger side door panel, I'll be able to figure out the wiring to the back of the stereo and everything that I had to do just now. I gotta say guys, it was not easy. Basically a complete custom install. Although the speakers were pretty much the same, I had to refit everything, making sure that the speaker fit to the bracket correctly, making sure I had the right screws and the right holes. Also chasing wires, cutting open wire looms, checking for continuity, and making sure that basically I'm hooking up the correct wires to the crossover and then to the speakers. Well, I have yet to turn them on, so let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what it sounds like. All right, guys, so you can see what I was talking about. I still have the original stereo here. I plan on swapping this thing out very soon. But for now, let's go ahead and listen to just a few seconds of the radio. All right, guys, well, we can only listen to just a couple seconds. I apologize for that. But to my ear, these speakers seem to be much more crisp, much more loud, and also have a lot more bass. I know that's probably not going to come off on camera because it's being recorded with crappy microphones on the camera. I am extremely impressed so far. I still have to get the other side going to get the full effect and get a new stereo in here. So I'm not gonna put any judgments out just yet, but stay tuned for more videos on the stereo system in this 1995 GMC Suburban. Guys, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, comment below, let me know what you think. Also check the description below this video for links to these speakers, to everything else I'm gonna be using. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching, peace out.